Hey gang, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation, and I do believe we should be live here on ye old Facebook. Yes, we are. And it uh, looks like there are already 25 people watching. Woohoo! Hey, leave us a comment uh, in the uh, the comment section here. And actually, I do believe there is a... Um, I do believe that you need to give me permission to bring your comment up on the screen. Let me just see if I can do this. Jonathan Holborn, let me see if this works. It should work, actually, because we're just on a page, not a group. Here we go. Jonathan Holborn says, hola. Hey, Jonathan Holborn, all the way from Los Angeles. How you doing, my friend? Martin Sanders is here also. Bob Holly is here. Preston Lorenzen says, great to see you, Troy. Hey, Preston. Max Jacobs says, good morning. Carol Stambor says, hi, Troy. Hey, Carol. How you doing? Uh, lots of comments going off uh, here already. Kaylin says, hello down there. <laughs> Love it. I'm bringing that up. Okay, that's fantastic. Hello down there. Uh, Maribel says, hello, Troy. Ben Siegfried says, uh, hello. Loud and clear says, Joel Andrews. Yes, we can hear you, says Karen Leslie. Awesome. Paul Carey says, hey, from Ireland here. Thanks for doing this call. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining in. Monte Cristo's on the call. Had a great phone conversation with Monte Cristo last night. That's right. He actually picked up the telephone and called me. My phone rang and I'm like, who is that calling me? And I saw Monte Cristo come up and we had a really good chat about uh, self-isolation. Jeff Martin says, hey, Troy, great to see you. Thanks so much for doing this. Hey, Jeff, my friend, how you doing? Thanks for joining in. Uh, Yaron Phillips, hey, from lockdown in New Zealand. Hi, from Christchurch in New Zealand. Says, Emily Bryant, how are you? Have you had a baby yet, Emily? When are you due to have a baby? Sam Minetti says, go elevate. All right, g'day from the Snowy Mountains, says Nicole. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, I have my good friend here with me on uh, ye old Skype. Simon Kelly, how are you, buddy? What's up, man? How are you, Troy? Yeah, like I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing very well, man. Uh, let me just see if I can bring us both up on the screen at the same time. Oh, look at that. Woo. Sweet. Uh, can you guys just let us know if you can hear and see Simon and myself? Just give us a heck yeah in the chat. Michael Klein says hello from Germany. Daryl Carey says hello. Uh, this is uh, awesome, awesome. We've got 110 people watching live right now on Facebook. That is just absolutely epic. Jamie Hill says, hey, hey, hey. So again, if you can hear and see both of us, Simon, maybe just count to 10. Make sure there's no weird delay going on your voice. Yeah, right. One. So I'm going to count all the way to 10. Can I just say other things? <laughs> of course you can say. Dude, you can tell me to shut up. You can do whatever you like. You're a grown up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Am I actually no, going to do it? No, anything but that. I don't want to be an adult right now. Being an adult is just, I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, you know what? Screw this being an adult thing. Adulting is hard work. Yeah. Simon rocking the face fuzz says Ben Tiffin. Where's that? Hang on, Ben. Hang on. Hang on. Let me just pull that out. Here we go. Simon rocking the face fuzz. Like it says Ben Tiffin. Awesome. Uh, what snazzy software are you broadcasting with OBS? Of course, it's taken us less than three minutes for someone to ask me about the software that we're using. <laughs> Love it. Kalen Wiggins, we are using Ecamm Live. There we go. I'm going to bring Kalen up on the screen there. Ecamm Live we are using. And uh, everything says loud and clear, beautiful, beautiful, awesome, so everyone can hear us and see us. Simon Kelly, what's been going on, my friend? You're uh, working from home, which... You're pretty used yeah. to anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 11 years of doing this. <laughs> There's been a bit of like co-working and working at various offices. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a long time coming. Now I can really, really thrive and share with other people like how to how to try to manage this stuff. Um, yeah, but it's been it's been a big week, man. Like I think in the in the last two weeks, things have really, really ramped up. But this week has been all about like getting in touch with my clients and uh, just seeing how they're doing, um, adjusting some of the work we're doing with them because I've got quite a few like hotel and venue clients. Mm. And then of course in Mavericks Club, like having a chat with our Mavericks and seeing how they're doing with their clients and seeing how we can offer support there. So yeah, it just has been a massive week. My like usual schedule and everything has just completely gone out the window. Yeah, and I can't believe it's Friday. But um, yeah, it's been it's been good to get in and have more conversations and just see where people are and just see how we can help. So yeah, totally, it's been good. Karen Leslie says Simon's an adult. We all heard that, uh, so it's on the record now. And uh, Christopher Stratman says all that solopreneur Damn. introvert practice has finally paid off. Yes, That's yes, it. yes. Well, remember um, Troy? We were talking to Josh. Oh no, actually, it was just me talking to Josh the other day, and he was like. He's like, mate, this is this is totally fine. Like being an introvert, like I, nothing changes. Like <laughs> I'm killing it here. It's fine. Exactly. You, you're saying you're talking to Chris Lemmer. He's like, this is just, it's all good. Like I homeschool my kids. Yeah. Like I've got what I need here. We're, we're living as we normally do. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
James Murgatroyd says, frozen here. Not sure what that means. Are you cold or is the image frozen, James? Christopher Shell says, are you guys going to have some kind of uh, Reggie and Kelly vibe or is it more like a Letterman, Paul Schaefer thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. You should um, – Dig up. I think he's talking about the dynamic between you and me. Uh, this is Christopher Shell from Design Rangers, of course, one of our Mavericks Club members. And uh, I think he's um, – uh, you should go back and have a look at some old episodes of Silence is Golden. I think it's like Simon oh, sure. Simon actually becomes the adult and I'm just the, the ADD kid who's just running around like a headless yeah. chook and Simon's trying to keep me on track. I think it was when you got the soundboard for your <laughs> iPad. That's when things just went – that's when things tanked. Oh, no. He's... Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Okay. There we go. Much much cheering, much cheering and delight. Um, Aaron Enright in New Zealand says, hey, guys, coming through loud and clear. Awesome, awesome, fantastic. Cool. So uh, I'm not sure what that comment is there from David Murren, but it's a – oh, yeah, oh, there we go. Ear tick, eyes tick. Beautiful. He can hear us and see us. Someone who just communicates in emojis. Fantastic. The opposite of Brian. <laughs> the opposite of Brian. Yeah. Love it. Um, so why are we here? Why are we here? What are we talking about? Yeah, that's a great question, we Troy. <laughs> well, we're here because uh, there's this thing called coronavirus, which has engulfed the planet and life has changed as we know it. And what we uh, understand is that it's now more important than ever that we show up for our community and help you guys as much as possible. So we've put together a um, presentation called a uh, how to crisis proof your digital agency in 2020 and to make sure that you it's a crisis management workshop really for you guys but the value proposition here is not only do we want to help you guys get through this crisis but we want you guys to help your clients get through this process so this is relevant for anyone watching this who has any client relationships or, or customers uh, this is going to help you get help your clients get through this crisis and it's going to help you survive and also set your business up so that you can thrive and make the most of the opportunity when we come out the other side of this, which we will. So um, I think we should just dive straight in. What do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, just what you're saying with coming out the other side, like I see this is like things are going to change. The world is going to change through this, but this is almost like it's a, it's a pause. So how do you want things to be after this? Like yeah. things will be different. So it's not just like it'll go back to business as usual, but how do you want things to be different when this is all done? You know, you don't want to just get to the end of Netflix. Like what else can we do? What else can we have ready so we can um, really hit the ground running? Yeah, 100%. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flick over to my screen, I believe. You should be able to see my screen about now. There we go. All right, cool. And I'm going to just kick open Keynote, and I'm going to walk you through this presentation. It is brought to you by Mavericks Club, which is our mastermind program for digital agencies and freelancers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So, how? Just give me a maybe, Simon. You can just give me a uh, hell yeah if you can see my slides on the screen on Facebook. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up. It has like Perfect. a. 15 second delay for me, but yeah, it's there. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so how do you crisis proof your digital agency in 2020? The big question here is, can your digital agency cope with the effects of COVID-19? And we're going to walk you through uh, some practical things you can start doing right away. Uh, first of all, let's just recap and set the scene. What we know to be true is this. Businesses and schools are closing their doors. Uh, we've taken Oscar out of daycare. So if you hear him running around in the background, then uh, that's what that's all about. Uh, constant bombarding with coronavirus stories in the media and social media. And I've called Simon a few times recently in the last couple of weeks and said, dude, you've got to pull me out of this deep, deep, dark rabbit hole because I've been watching the news for half an hour and now I just feel very bleak. So you've got to really be careful of how much you consume. Yeah, because you were moving house at the time and I think you were listening to the radio in the car. And yeah. I was like, no, turn it off, turn <laughs> that's it right. off. Like, that's right. I don't have that. And um, I'm, you know, controlling the inputs, I think is important. And if it's just whatever's coming at you, it's like, no, 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 that's yeah. not there to make you feel good. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, uh, I then started listening to Snarky Puppy on uh, Spotify instead and that changed everything. Thank you, Snarky yeah, Puppy. Uh, people are self-isolating and have been for quite some time, and that's just going to uh, become more of a thing. We're going to have to self-isolate more as the restrictions get tighter and tighter. Consumers are behaving with a scarcity mentality. It is cray-cray. You go to the supermarket and the shelves are empty. Um, and, you know, luckily, 
my mum keeps sending me toilet paper in the post. I'm like, mum, stop doing that because they're just going to intercept it halfway through and it won't get here. It's like you, could, you, you probably have more luck sending cash in envelopes in the post at the moment than you do toilet paper. Yeah. And in our world, specifically when it comes to digital agencies and freelancers, projects are being put on hold and some clients are losing their mind and cancelling care plans and retainers. So what I want to do is just walk you through the five different types of reactions that we're seeing to coronavirus. The first is denial, and there are still plenty of people who are in denial. And that was me when I this first happened, you know, on Friday the 13th uh, is really when it started to, el- started to escalate here. And um, I was moving house <clears throat> and I was listening to it on the news. And I was like, no, oh, this is not a thing. This is just, this is fine. This will go away. And I was in complete denial. And by the Sunday night, uh, we moved into a new place and I was completely freaking out. And that's where a lot of people you know, there are still a few people in denial, which is kind of interesting, um, but there are definitely people now just freaking out um, and going, what the hell is happening? And I went through that pretty quickly. There's a bunch of people in limbo just saying, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and wait until the government tells me what to do. And that's also not a great place because they don't really know what they're doing. They're kind of winging it. Um, it things are moving so quickly. Uh, no one really knows, um, you know, how this is going to play out. There are some people who are optimistic, uh, who are saying, well, you know, there's a silver lining in every cloud and we're going to get through this and we're remaining optimistic. And then there are people who are just downright taking control, which is definitely where I feel I'm at now. And what I, what I want to talk about here is in a time where things are so uncertain and there is so much out of your control, there's only a, ver- there's a very few, you know, very few things that you can actually control. And so I would just encourage you to think about the things that you can control. We're going to talk about some of those things on this call. Think about the things that you can control and take control of those things because there's so much else that's out of your control. My, my good friend Jack Bourne from Deadline Funnel sent a great email recently and he signed off by saying, now more than ever, it's important to control what you can. It doesn't matter how little that is. So uh, we are definitely taking control and we would encourage you to just get into that mindset of taking control. Denial is not going to help you. Freaking out is not going to help you because you can't change it. There's nothing you can do to change it. Sitting in limbo is not going to help because you're just waiting for someone else to determine your destiny. Being optimistic is a good place to be, but taking control is really where you want to be. So here's the COVID-19 plan for digital agencies and freelancers uh, over the coming months. These, there's three real key elements to this. One is you got to lead your people. You've got to lead your tribe. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. You've got to survive. You've got to make sure your business survives this crisis. And then you've got to set your business up so that you can thrive when we come out the other side of it. Now, in order to do that, uh, when we talk about leading your tribe, what we're really talking about is your team. And maybe for some of you on this call, you might not have a team. That's okay. What we mean there is other freelancers and other uh, other people who are working from home that you might be able to collaborate with. So even if you don't have staff, you've still got a team. Your customers and your suppliers, people that you buy things from, um, hosting companies, software companies, other uh, agencies and other um, freelancers. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, there will be a replay, of course, because this is on Facebook Live. Just answering some questions there. This is on Facebook Live. So of course, the recording will be here on Facebook for eternity unless they take it down. In order to survive, what we're talking about here is getting a hold of your cash flow, uh, rejigging and re-optimizing your workflow, that is the actual way that you're spending your time during the day, and then also getting a handle of your finances. So cash flow is a short-term thing, finances is the long-term thing. We'll talk about all of these things in detail in a moment. And then in order to thrive, you've got to make sure you are in good health, otherwise you are no good to anyone. So we want to make sure that you're in good health. We need to look at your business model and we might need to make some changes there. And I think now is the perfect time to be revisiting your business model to make sure that you've got some things set up for when we come out of the other side of this. And then you've got to have a game plan and we'll talk about that as well. So how do we lead your, how do you, how do you lead your team? Yeah. And again, if you don't have a team, then just think about the other freelancers and the other contractors that you're collaborating with, the other people that you're collaborating with online. I actually think now's a great time if you don't have a team, if you're a solopreneur and you're working from home, as we all are now, and I think now's a great time to partner up with people who have complementary skills. So if you're really strong with design, but really weak in, in e-commerce, now might be a really good opportunity to find someone who's good at e-commerce but isn't strong with design and partner up with them because e-commerce is definitely an opportunity. 
right now. Uh, so I think I predict there will be new businesses and new ventures and entire new entities that are born over the, over the coming months because people um, uh, will be partnering up. Unfortunately, James Murgatroyd, it's still not working for him, so he'll catch the replay. Sorry about that, James. Good old Australian internet, hey? So how do you resource your team? Well, the first thing you want to do is acknowledge and reassure. So we've been doing this online, not only with our team, but with our our, our community as well. Acknowledge and reassure. You want to acknowledge that this this is a thing. Uh, Normalise the experience for people. Let people know, hey, this is this is going on. Coronavirus is here, and it's uh, you know it's 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 challenging for all of us. And then reassure them that you know we're going to come out the other side of this. You want to support people to work from home, both physically and mentally. So you want to support people. When I say physically, you want to make sure that uh, the their ergonomics are set up and that they've got a good home office and a good environment to set up working from home as much as possible. You want to make sure they're not, you're not you or you're, the people that you're working with, <clears throat> excuse me, are not crouched over a, a laptop on a tiny kitchen table. You want to make sure that you've got some good ergonomics and that you're also, you know, stretching during the day, getting up, walking around, getting the blood flowing to your head, uh, doing some <clears throat> really practical physical things to keep yourself in good shape. <clears throat> and mentally, you want to make sure that you're checking in with your people on a regular basis, multiple times a day. I'm just calling my dudes on the phone, you know, every day I'll call a couple of people on the phone or leave a Voxer message or ping them on Slack or say, hey, how you doing? Just checking in. Partially, it's also for me to normalize the experience and so that we can have a quick conversation just to make sure that we're okay from a, a mental health point of view. And then you want to set up a communication rhythm. You want to make sure that you're communicating with your team on a regular basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like having... You know, in the morning, I like checking in with the team. Uh, we do a weekly call on Mondays. I'm going to try and ramp that up and do two or three of those a week just to check in with people, even if it's not the entire team, if I can get half a dozen people on a call just to make sure everyone's okay. Let them know that they're supported and let everyone know that we are in this together. That's the first thing you can do to start to lead your team is just let them know that they're supported and we're in this together. And we'll talk more about the team in a moment when we, when we come to workflow. How do you communicate to your clients? What should you be communicating to your clients right now? Here are three things that we think are really going to help. The first thing is that you need to proactively broadcast that it's business as usual. And here's why. Nobody wants businesses to fail during this time. If businesses fail during this time, that puts more stress and more strain on the economy and on our welfare systems and on government. Everybody's, it's in everyone's best interest that businesses succeed and thrive during this time. And we'll talk a bit more about that later on in the presentation. But the, just this mindset that, you know, giving up now and running for the hills is not an option, right? We have to stay open. We have to be open for business as usual. And you have to let your clients know we are here for you. Now is the time for you guys to step up for your clients and let them know we are here for you, okay? The second thing is you want to talk about opportunities, you want to talk to your clients about opportunities. Now, let's just acknowledge the fact that there will be some businesses that just fall off the face of the earth during this time, and that is very sad. Um, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes there's just not much we can do about that. That is going to happen. That is a reality. But you want to talk to all of your clients about any opportunity that you can help them identify for them to either pivot their business model, like for example, yoga classes and, and Pilates uh, classes and dance classes are all going online. My wife's done yoga here from home over Zoom uh, with her, her yoga class. Her choir jumped on Zoom the other night and had a bit of a sing together over Zoom. Um, you need to be able to identify opportunities for your clients to help them pivot and help them uh, make the most of this, right? And it's your job to be helping them identify those opportunities because they're freaking out, okay? They're really freaking out and they need someone to put a plan in front of them. So talk to your clients about what the opportunities are and just use that, use that conversation to start a dialogue. And then add as much value as you possibly can and they will never forget you. If you are there for them right now to support them through this time, they will never forget you. But please don't don't offer your services for free. Don't discount your services just because the economy is taking a hit, okay? This is a, a really bad idea. And I'll tell you why. Just like basic economics. If you run out of profit, if you go out of business because you're just trying to help people but you're not getting paid, then you can't help anyone. 
So now is not the time to discount and now is not the time to do it for free. You might want to talk about payment plans and you might want to talk about payment options with your clients, but now is not the time to do things for free or discount just because the economy is taking a hit. Okay, so I just want you to really get that into your into your mindset because I see this happening a lot. I see a lot of people saying, well, we'll just do it for free. We'll, you know, we'll do it for a discount and that's not going to help your business in the long term. And if you're, you owe it to your clients to run a profitable business. I've been saying that for years now is really more relevant than ever. You owe it to your clients to run a profitable business, otherwise you can't serve them. And you owe it to yourself to run a profitable business. And it is doable, you can do this, okay? Also, you wanna talk to your suppliers and your partners about payment options. So just like your clients are probably gonna be talking to you about payment options, and you should be offering them that where possible without uh, hurting your own business, you wanna talk to your suppliers and partners about payment options. So if you're paying rent, if you are hiring other developers, if you're talk, talk, you know, hiring white label SEO companies, your hosting companies, talk to them about payment options, okay? And ask your suppliers and your partners, hey, how can we help you? I've been reaching out to a whole bunch of people over the last week saying, hey, how are you guys going? Is there anything we can do to help? What I'm, what, there's two things I wanna do here. One, I wanna start a conversation with people and just let them know that we're here and that we're here to help them and we're here to support them in any way we can. And two, I just want to put a massive deposit in the bank of reciprocity, right? I just want to add as much value to my people and my community as I can so that down the track, if I need some help, then I can take a, I can take a withdrawal out of that bank of reciprocity and there's enough value and goodwill in the community that I can lean on some people. So it's a win-win. It's not completely selfless. Helping other people will pay off for you in the long run, yeah? And partner up. I alluded to this before. If you have skills that you know other people need, I guarantee other people have skills that you need. So partner up. If you're really good at SEO, partner up with someone who's really good at e-commerce. Now's a great time. If you are really good with supply chain logistics and someone else is really good with e-commerce, partner up because supply chain logistics are taking a hammering at the moment. There's lots of things sold out. Try and order a podcast microphone at the moment. It's sold out. Uh, think about what it is you can do and what value you can add to what someone else is doing and partner up any way you can. All right, just wanna ask you a quick question, check in. What do you need to do first? Out of what we've just spoken about, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you need to do first. I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna come back to scene two. Um, I'm gonna come back to scene five actually, which should be Simon and myself. What do you need to do first? Man, I reckon the, um, there's a lot of opportunity in the partner up side of things. I think that's that's huge. And I think you, you may not know what that will end up looking like, but just connecting with people and seeing what comes of that, what kind of clients do you have, what kind of challenges, I know this, like, I think that's gonna create something amazing. I mean, with, with all the people in this community, there's really like no project that we couldn't take on. Yeah. It's just a matter of building that, like that giving mindset into it. And how can we, how can we really just team up and help each other yeah. and like rise together? It's, it's crazy times, but I think we're all better off um, going together. Yeah. I love this comment from Jennifer Paganessi. Hey Jen, how you doing? I'm going to see if I can bring this up on the broadcast. It's a long comment, so it might take up a fair bit of the screen. Been working all week, getting my clients programming for individuals with Down syndrome online. Today was the first day and we had over 60 people join. It was so cool to be part of a company that's being flexible and adjusting. You legend, that's Jennifer so Paganessi. Love it, love it, love it. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, David Towers says partner up with people. Uh, Bill Hibbler says payment plans to hosting and maintenance clients. Yeah, exactly. Payment plans to hosting and maintenance clients. And uh, Jude Love out of Sydney. Oh, perfect. Hey, Jude. Uh, Jude says write to clients with this outline. Absolutely. Yeah, just like please take what we're doing here and just you know use it however you can. Uh, Tell the clients it's business as usual. Most seem okay, but probably good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, lead my team, customers and suppliers, says Ben Tiffin. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Carol Stamble says, am I the only one that lost connection to the video? Oh, bummer. <laughs> well, there are 157 people watching this live right now. Um, I'm going to take some questions a bit later on, Sam and Eddie, so keep that one. Uh, Yes, I've been leaning into my mastermind group and we have been supporting each other with creative ideas through the past couple of weeks, says Michelle Estrada. Absolutely. I'm going to bring that up on the screen here right now. We've been doing that with our Maverick Club mastermind as well. We've been just trying to connect with those guys and support them as much as possible, get them talking to each other, get them partnering up. And more importantly, just let them know that we're here for them to support them. 
no one's got a magic bullet for what's going on. No one is going to fix this like that, okay? And my personal opinion is that this is not going to go away in a couple of weeks. This is here for a while, and it is going to change the way that we live for a while. What people want to know more than anything is that they've just got some support and they want some clarity because there's so much confusion at the moment. There's so many mixed messages. What people want is just some clarity. And if you can put a plan in front of them to give them something to focus on and give them some support over the next few months, you are going to be the shining star in their darkness. And that's where I think we should be positioning ourselves. Yeah. Keep a client for life if you're helping them now. They're going to remember the people that have helped them through this. Totally. Uh, Jeff Martin says, so good to hear you say that we shouldn't discount. I really wasn't sure how to approach that, but you're right. We still have the cost from our hosting companies and services. Absolutely. What we need to do is is get uh, um, smarter and more creative about the way that we communicate with our clients. James Fulton, adding, in, adding on e-commerce to existing sites has been a winner for us this week. Awesome work. Great work, James Fulton. Um, and Robert Mecklen says, where can I find mastermind participants? We'll talk about that a little bit uh, in a moment, Robert. Uh, Jenny Shell says, <clears throat> excuse me, Jenny Shell, one of our mastermind members says, we've been good about talking to our clients, want to keep talking to the team so they're certain we're going to be okay and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Can I just say, I've been doing live streams for quite some time, as Simon Kelly will attest, and we've done plenty of live streams during, you know, Silence is Golden. We were going live every week. I've been going live most days for the last week. I've done plenty of live streams online. This is the most engaging time I've ever seen online in the history of me using the internet. They're, everyone's at home and everyone's online connecting with each other, right? Now is the time more than ever to be showing up online and leading your people because people are hungry. People are desperate for some kind of certainty, some kind of consistency, and some kind of assurance that things are going to be okay and that we're in this together. People want to feel supported. So, this is, I mean, there's 163 people watching this live right now. We've had 28 likes, 21 love hearts, two smiley faces. I don't know how many comments. I mean, I can't even keep up with the amount of comments we've had. It's just, this is, the engagement is off the charts. 187 comments so far on this live. We've been live for, you know, 27 minutes. It's nutballs, right? So this is proof that there is a captive audience waiting for you to lead them. Okay, and that is your challenge, is to start leading your tribe. Yes, it's confronting. Yes, it's scary. I know I come across as a bit of a natural online here, but I have all sorts of anxiety. Simon will tell you that. Before I go live, I have all sorts of panic attacks and anxieties about what if people think I'm full of it and all this kind of self-doubt. But I do it anyway because I know that you guys need leadership now more than ever, and I'm prepared to put myself out there and say, hey, I don't care if I look back on this in years to come and go, what the hell was I thinking? Right now, people need leadership. And so I'm happy to jump off the cliff and see what happens and to put myself in this position. And I I really urge you guys to do the same. I'm not suggesting you have to go live every day. What I'm suggesting is that people want leadership more than anything right now. All right, let's get back to the uh, slide deck here. I think it's scene six if I do that. Perfect. All right. So what do you need to do first? We've answered that question. Now let's talk about how to survive. First thing we're going to do is control your cash flow, okay? because we don't know what's going to happen. People might put projects on hold. They might cancel care plans. We've got to control cash flow. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, collect all money outstanding. Anyone owes you money, even Uncle Bob from 1995, go and tap Uncle Bob on the shoulder and say, listen, mate, I need that 50 I lent you. Uh, Collect all money outstanding. Anyone has got outstanding invoices, get on the phone, have a conversation. Don't play hardball with them, but just use it as a way to start a conversation. Hey, there's some outstanding money. Let's have a conversation about that um, and let's have a conversation about how we can help you over the coming months. Follow up every single proposal and actually switch out the word proposal for lead. Follow up every single lead or potential lead and any proposal outstanding, yeah? Uh, Nick Gulich says e-commerce is a definite winner. Membership sites are also killer, absolutely. Uh, and, And third point here is lower your costs, but be prepared to increase investment. An investment is something that's going to pay off in the long term. So right now, you know, the idea of letting all your staff go, I don't think that's going to serve your business long term. And I know this is a difficult thing to think about. You should definitely be lowering costs. We went through this with the team yesterday and we were just 
you know, my mind boggles at how much money we've been wasting in this business. And so this is a great opportunity for us to go, you know what, we don't need any of that stuff. Let's just get rid of all of that and trim the business right down. But we're still going to make the investments and in fact, increase investment in the business, but we're going to lower costs. So we're moving some of our our money away from costs that just don't serve the business. If it doesn't serve the business, it's a cost. If it does serve the business and it's going to serve the business long term, then it's an investment. So lower costs, increase investment. And then let's talk about your workflow for a second because things are definitely changing and your team are changing and the way that you work are changing. So let's talk about your workflow. Uh, Just a couple of tactical ideas here. Do a daily huddle and sort your actions by impact. So just jump on with, and again, if you're a solopreneur, just find another solopreneur you can partner up with. Jump on at 8.30, 9 o'clock every morning, same time every morning. Say, hey, what are you working on today? Here's what I'm working on. Let's work together to sort this out by impact. What are the most important things that we need to do today? We've got a, a Slack bot, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got a Slack bot called Heartbeat. And uh, first thing in the morning, you jump into Slack, you click on a link, you fill in a form, basically saying what your one mission critical task is for the day. What is the most important thing I need to get done today? You put that into Heartbeat. Everyone on the team can then see what you're working on. And at the end of the day, a little Slack bot reminds you and says, hey, did you get that task done today? If not, why not? And you just update it. So everyone's got visibility across the whole team, what people are working on. And then you can tap someone on the shoulder and say, hey, what's going on, dude? What are you working on that for? That's like, that's not the most mission critical thing. Don't worry about that. Let's have a look at your action your action list. Cool. Let's reorganize this by impact. This thing here is going to have the most impact. Don't worry about that. Let that fire burn for now, man. It doesn't really matter. So just getting into a rhythm of accountability for yourself and, and for your team. Double down on output. And what this really means is get on the phones. You and everyone working in your organization, just get on the phones and start talking to customers and clients, yeah? And use this framework, use the stuff that we're talking about in this presentation to start that conversation. Hey, I know I owe you some money and it's gonna be a problem to pay that right now and here's why, how can we work together? Hey, I know you owe me some money and I know that you're probably avoiding this conversation, but let's work together to see how we can get a great outcome for everyone. Yeah. And then a reallocation of working hours. So we were talking to Josh the other day and uh, he works with some people in the real estate industry. And uh, he's saying, you know, in in the real estate industry, right, uh, most real estate agents, you know, walk around knocking on doors saying, hey, do you want to sell your house or do you want to rent a, you know, rent a condo? Well, they can't do that now because of social distancing and coronavirus. So how they don't know how to structure their day unless they're out pounding the pavement because that's what they're used to. That's what they've been doing for 10 years. So you, you send them home and say, you've got to stay home now. They're not sure how to work. So how do we reallocate our working hours and how do we take someone who's been doing this job for so long and say, you know what? I don't need you to do that right now. I need you to do something else. Let's have a look at how we can help you work from home, be productive, stay sane, keep your mental health in good order, but also have a really good positive impact on the business. So just talk to your team about how to restructure their day and reallocate their hours. And then how do you optimize your finance flow? So this is about making sure that you've got up-to-date data on your books. Make sure that you are updating your books, I would say, daily. Like make sure your books are, you know, please do not put this in the too hard basket. You'll come back in six months' time. There's a deep, dark skeleton in the closet there that you haven't dealt with. So get your books up to date right now and make sure they're up to date daily so that you've got your finger on the pulse and you know exactly what position you're in. And then have a break even point. So you should know, I need to make $330 every day to break even. I need to make you know $2,300 every week to keep the lights on and break even and not go under. You need to know what that break even point is and that should be your focus every day. And use whatever business stimulus package you can get your hands on. I've got a very exciting phone call at midday today with my accountant because he's going to tell us exactly what we're eligible for uh, from the business stimulus package. And we're expecting that we're be eligible for quite a bit because we employ staff, we pay rent. So we are hoping that we can uh, get some assistance from the government, which is going to help us categorically. Absolutely, it's going to help us and we will take whatever assistance we can get. All right, what do you need to act on right now? Let us know in the comments, what do you need to act on right now? I'm just going to switch over my screens here, come back to here. Mr. Kelly, what do you need to act on right now? 
I, I think the um, sorting by impact, like what are the what are the activities you're doing? Like if this is a time that I, I've felt so busy this week and I've done a lot of things that have been impactful and then a lot of things that I'm not sure if they've had any impact at all and mm-hmm. I kind of forget what they are. So it's just, it's partnering up. I think if you're just solo, have calls with people, as you were saying, have a chat, like, what are you working on today? Is that, is that really going to be the impact? Are you avoiding having these phone calls with your clients? Let's do this together. Come on, I'll be your accountability buddy. Let's make this happen together. We can, we can work on this. We can, yeah, the accountability I think is important if you don't have your own team. So absolutely. And I mean, because the thing is right now, more than ever working from home, you can get lost in this little bubble. Look at that beautiful sun coming in the, in the, in the window there, man. Something to appreciate. Something to appreciate. This is a beautiful sun coming in the window there. Um, I can see Max, our videographer watching this going, ah, close the blinds. The sun's killing me. Um, uh, more than anything, we, we, you know, even when you're working in an office environment, which we normally do, you can get stuck in your own little silo going, I'm working on the right things and I'm being really productive. And someone peers over your shoulder and goes, dude, what the hell are you doing? You've done this to me several times where you've, you've reached in and gone, Troy, <laughs> out hole. of the rabbit hole, dude, <laughs> you're not working on. So now working from home more than ever, we need people to just check in and say, mate, what are you doing? Like, that's not the most, that's not the most relevant thing that you should be working on right now. Uh, Jamie Hill says, anyone needs to team up, reach out to me. I'd be happy to take a few minutes with anyone that needs it. You are a legend, Jamie. You are a man with a golden heart. Uh, he's a one of our coaches at WP Elevation and in the Mavericks Club and just an absolute lovely, lovely human being. Uh, take him up on that. And James Mur- Murgatroyd says, I restarted and I'm in. Woohoo! Thanks for being here, James. Um, and Patrick O'Doherty, of course, says, nutballs is my key takeaway from this session. <laughs> Uh, I miss you, Patrick. It's been too long. Fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And Sheila Hurd also says she loves nutballs. It's a great word, isn't it, nutballs? Um, oh, I love this. Don't joke about this, Sam and Eddie. Sam and Eddie says, I want Troy and Simon to lead us in a, med- in a meditation. I can just imagine Troy now. And imagine the sun basking across your face. Nutballs. <laughs> I've actually thought about doing a daily meditation because I've had some people tell me recently, you should start meditating again. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. But of course I would live stream it, right? Because that would be radical accountability. And um, I reckon that'd that would be, not be meditation. I reckon that'd be cool if I just meditated, <laughs> live streamed meditation, just did nothing for 10 minutes. So how am I going to meditate for 10 minutes? Here we go. Mm. Just Wonder did nothing for people 10 are watching. Minutes. Wonder what the comments are saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm meditating. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to sit here. Tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow's Saturday, Monday, I'm just going to sit here and meditate for 10 minutes and do nothing. Yeah. It'll be uh, the most um, most engaging live stream. Yeah, watching paint dry. Yeah. I led a bit of a meditation at the um, at the Thailand uh, retreat that we had two you years did. ago while, yeah. while Maddie was still waking up and, and shaking the drinks from the night before. That's right. <laughs> before awesome. we did the um, the yoga class. So we're sitting there. That was, that was awesome. That was so nice when the sun was rising. Lovely. Ben Tiffin says, I'm going to try to partner up with another solo guy I know to see how we can help each other. Awesome. Love it. Um, and uh, uh, Robert uh, Richard Zarati also says, open to partnering. PM me. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, <laughs> Robert Mecklen says, put a plant in your place. <laughs> while, while you're meditating, just put a plant in your place. Love it. All right, cool. Uh, so let's get into the final part of this um this presentation now let me just go back to scene six i believe it is thank you here we go cool so now let's talk about how to thrive first thing you've got to do is maintain your health okay if you go down you are no good to anyone i mean if you go down with coronavirus if you go down with the flu which is still going around if you go down with a really bad cold which is going around you are no good to anyone um if you <laughs> neglect your physical health and your mental health uh, you know, it's, it's just not a good outcome. So consume wisely. And when I say consume wisely, we're talking about, yes, we're talking about food and alcohol and drugs. Consume wisely. Don't punish yourself. Don't fall off the bandwagon here. But I'm also talking about content that you consume. Consume the news very wisely and consume social media very wisely because it can be detrimental to your health. So just make sure you've got good eating regime, good sleeping patterns, go to bed the same time every night, wake up the same time every morning, get into a routine because that's one thing you can control. Continue to exercise. Super, super important that, look, if if you're one of those people that's never exercised, here here is the scientific 
reason, there's one reason that you should exercise, right? And here it is. Scientifically, you cannot argue with this. Here's why you should exercise. And then I'm going to tell you exactly how you can exercise in seven minutes a day, seven minutes a day. In fact, you only need to do this three times a week if you follow my instructions clearly, okay? So here's why you should exercise. The body uh, lives on oxygen. That's an undeniable fact, right? We need oxygen to survive. The thing that gives oxygen to our body is blood. That's the purpose of blood, is the heart, beautiful organ we have here, pumps blood around the body and delivers oxygen, right? That is how we survive, that's how we live. And if you are a healthy human being, it's because you've got lots of beautiful blood pumping lovely oxygen around your body and your brain. There's one thing you can do, you can actually control to increase the amount of oxygen flowing around your body, and that is get your heart rate up by doing some exercise. That's why you'll hear people say after they've done a workout or they've had their heart rate up that they feel amazing. Like half an hour later, they're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. And I don't know why. It's because you're full of oxygen, which is what we live off. Yeah. So here's how to exercise. If you've never done it before or if you're struggling to exercise from home, grab a free app on the phone called Seven. Uh, just search Seven Minute Workout, but the app is actually just called Seven. And there's the free version as far as I know, the last time I downloaded it, has one seven-minute workout on it, which is totally free. It's the same workout, and it's a combination of, you know, star jumps and push-ups and, you know, stepping up onto a chair and uh, take seven minutes to do it, <clears throat> and you'll be pretty buggered by the end of it. Now, if you really want to ramp this up, you could just do that every morning, and you could. You could do it twice every morning, so it's a 14-minute workout every morning, and you'd be even better, or you could do it three times and do a 21-minute workout and just do that three times a week and you are going to maintain some kind of good, basic physical health, okay? So continue to exercise. Uh, stop and breathe. Take, this is something I'm very bad at, I'll admit. <clears throat> Absolute transparency, I'm very bad at doing this. Stop and breathe, just slow down, stop, breathe. There's a, there's a um, great article about the Navy SEALs going around the internet at the moment who they do deep breathing for two minutes every day and it, 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 again, it's like kind of like exercise, just this deep breathing for two minutes a day fills your body with oxygen, which makes you feel amazing, okay? Mm. So <clears throat> this is about you maintaining your personal health so that you can continue to thrive and lead your business. Cool. Nick Gulich says, I will totally do this seven-minute thing. I've needed to kickstart my fitness again. Nick, I'm coming to get you, my friend, all right? You can't say that on a live stream and then not do it. I'm going to be pinging you on Facebook and making sure you do that, all right? So this is about making sure that you are individually healthy and that your personal health is in good shape so that you can continue to lead your business and lead your clients. Now, what do you do from a business point of view to make sure you thrive? Well, I wanna talk about your business model because I think now is a great time to be revisiting your business model and making some adjustments to your business model. Now, this is quite complex, but I'm just gonna give you the high level overview, okay? We have this model called Simplify to Amplify. There's a few pieces of this puzzle. I'll just walk through it as, as quickly as I can to give you enough to think about so that you can start making some changes to your business now that will pay off in three, six, nine, 12 months time, okay? First thing you wanna do is simplify what you're doing. The, the advantage of this is it frees up your time, improves your cash flow, you get control over your money, and what you want to do is put together a 2080 package. And the way that the way that I think about this is it's it's Pareto's principle. There's 20% of what we do that adds 80% of the value to our customers. So let's say you're a you're a you know full service digital agency or a full service freelancer, but your really your real sweet spot is conversion rate optimization for e-commerce. That's what you're really good at and that's what you love doing. So just focus on that for now. Take the 20% of what it is you do that delivers 80% of the value and just focus on that, okay? This will free up your time because you won't be doing all that dumb shit anymore that you don't need to do. That's the technical word for it. Stop doing dumb shit for other people for no money, okay? That's rule number one. It'll improve your cash flow, right? Because you've now got a package that you can put in front of people and you've got a clear focus. Get control of your money, which we spoke about. Put this 2080 package together. Then there's a whole piece around your vision, values, and mission, which we haven't got time to go into now. But really, I think the, the, the businesses that are going to come out of this and will be really thriving are businesses that have a clear vision and are on a mission and stay true to the path. 
it's going to be very easy to get distracted and to try and go off on in, in 100 different directions over the next few months. And I really think it's important that you stay focused on what your vision is. Once you've got a simplified offering, let's call it conversion rate optimization for e-commerce, what you want to do is just go through this process of clarifying your message and verifying it. And this is kind of technical, but the, the, the takeaway here is you've got to clarify your message so that it makes sense to people and then verify it by getting them to buy it. So I was just on a call with one of our Mavericks this morning and I was saying the, the walking them through this exercise of taking everything they do in their organization, right? Let's say, for example, I do, um, I optimize checkout pages by making them narrower. I'm just making an example up here, but we do know that narrow checkout pages convert better than wide checkout pages. So let's say, for example, you're sitting with a client and you're talking to a client and they're saying, look, we've got this e-commerce store and it's just not converting. And you want to say, well, we can help optimize your checkout form by making it narrower. They're going to go, huh? I don't understand what you're talking about. So what you want to do is just add the words so that to the end of every sentence you say. We're going to, you know, let me add it. I want to optimize your checkout form by making it narrower so that you can make more sales and get a better return on your ad spend. Or so that you can increase your conversion rate and lower your cost per acquisition or so that you can make more prof profit by selling more contact lenses or so that whatever, right? So just add the word so that to whatever you do and then turn the second half of that sentence into a benefit that you put in front of the customer. And then to get them to verify it, you just need someone to buy this thing that you're offering. And this is the 2080 package, the 20% of what you do that delivers 80% of the value. Clarify your message, put it in front of people, get someone to buy it, then you verified it then upgrade your legacy customers. Go back to all of your customers and upgrade them to some kind of care plan or monthly retainer to help so that you can help them get through this period. Because as I said at the start of this call, you can't do it for free. Now, once you've verified your offering, then you develop your product and your documentation and build your team to help you. Okay, this is called codifying it. And this really is just some basic documentation that explains this is how we do things here. This is how we do things here. Let me talk about Sam Manetti and Chris and Jenny Shell who are on this call. Uh, they're on the live stream now. They run an organization called Design Rangers and they have this fantastic product called Camps that are basically discovery sessions. Some of you people may have seen the webinar they ran a couple of weeks ago. And what they do is they sell discovery sessions, but they don't call them discovery sessions. They call them camps, which is in line with their brand and their niche, right? So they have like a branding camp and a personality camp uh, and they're, they're and a persona camp and they're workshops that they run for clients. Now they're codifying how they run those workshops. So they're putting in place some basic documentation, which says, this is how we run camps here at Design Rangers. That allows them to hire more staff to help them grow, but it also allows them to teach other agencies how they run their camps, which is the model that they're, they're looking at now. And they're super smart. And I don't know where they got that idea, but they're really clever. <laughs> of course, they're uh, in Mavericks Club and we were working on that in San Diego a couple of months ago, which seems like years ago. Anyway, um, that's the idea is develop the product, develop the documentation around that, and then build out your team. Yeah, to help you scale it. And your team might be other agencies that you partner with, or it could be people that you hire. And then of course, amplifying this through things like getting on other people's podcasts. Now that you've got a message to, to sell and you've got a story to tell and you've got a product for people to buy and you've got a an entry point for people to enter your business, right? Having a product gives you an entry point. Selling services to clients, you've got no entry point because you're selling services and I can get services on Upwork very cheap. Okay, so having a product gives you an entry point for, for customers to enter your business. Amplification is through getting on other people's podcasts, guest blogging on other people's blogs, creating YouTube videos and publishing yourself, going live on Facebook and having conversations and um, helping people and supporting people, getting picking up the phone and talking to your customers, uh, you know, starting your own podcast, blogging, running ads, uh, going to networking events or virtual networking events or summits now as it's going to be online. All that stuff amplifies now that you've got this product in place. And the big mistake that we see people making is they start with the amplification. They try and just, you know, run ads and they start a podcast and they start a YouTube channel. They don't have a product yet or they get stuck in the codification part, which is where yeah. they just build out all these fancy automations in Airtable and Zapier and they hire someone to go do the thing and they've got all this fantastic infrastructure in the business and they don't have any customers. Make sense? 
So uh, I just want to talk about uh, the game plan now. So we've talked about the business model. Here's the game plan. Here's where you are today, right? This is today. And let's say, we have no idea, but let's say this thing lasts 6, 12, 18 months. We don't know, right? But let's say for the sake of this argument that it lasts 12 months. There's a couple of decisions that you've got. You can do nothing, which is going to get you a poor outcome. You can. This is denial, panic, and limbo, right? This is what this is about. Denial, freaking out, limbo. You do nothing. In 12 months' time, you're in a worse position than you are now, okay? Or you can do this which is maintain the status quo where you are now. You may grow a little bit. You may shrink a little bit. It might go up and down. It's going to be a roller coaster. It's going to be rocky. But when we come out of this on the other side, you're in a position to take advantage of this opportunity because your business is in better shape than it was pre-coronavirus. And that is the COVID-19 plan. You, You should be using this time to strengthen your business So that when the zombie apocalypse finishes and we all leave our house and go out and say hi to each other again, right, and rejoice in the streets, that you are in this great position to take advantage of that opportunity. And really the way to do that is to do smart things now. Get around smart people and follow what they're doing and lead your people and take what you've learned in this presentation and apply it to your business. The thing is, if you, and I can tell you this from personal experience, the longer you stay on that red line, the further away you get from the green line. And that's why I've had to ring Simon Kelly quite a few times in the last couple of weeks and go, dude, I'm making red line decisions here. He's <laughs> like, man, what are you doing? Like, just get up on the green line. Because to go from the red line to the green line, right now, where you're at today, it's just a decision. It's just a decision to say, you know what? I'm going to take control of my destiny and my business and, and I'm going to lead our tribe, lead our customers, and I'm going to start doing smart things right now. I'm not going to wait because the longer you wait, the harder it gets. If you take action now, the reward will come later. And you can see how this plays out. You've got a couple of decisions. You've got one decision really, and you've got a couple of outcomes that this can lead to. Yeah. Flatten your own curve. Love it, Jude Love. Fantastic. Golden, golden, golden. Don't do stupid shit because Troy said not to. Exactly. (laughs) So, uh, your next steps, I just want to give you a couple of options. Your next steps are, we've got um, an incredible uh, uh, Facebook group. It's totally free. It's called Digital Mavericks. If you are not already in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, I would strongly suggest that you get in there right now. Just go to Facebook and search for the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Get in there. It's totally free and it's exploding at the moment. We, we've had, you know, we had 84 people join in the last couple of days. It's just been nutballs. Um, uh, the other option is we have packaged up our best training ever the Digital Agency Blueprint. It's a combination of uh, a few of our trainings that we've put together into a package. Uh, It will help you attract high quality clients. It will help you manage those relationships and deliver profitable projects. And it will help you turn those clients into recurring revenue. That usually retails for over $4,000. Those courses packaged up retail for over $4,000. We've got that on sale at the moment for $1,497. I'm going to try and get uh, the WPE crew who are on here to get a link to that, please. If you can drop a link in the comments there, please, uh, Ben, uh, at WPE crew, uh, to the Digital Agency Blueprint uh, training. Uh, that is currently on sale for $1,497. So if, you, if you're ready to double down and make this time your time to strengthen your business, grab the Digital Agency Blueprint. And if you're in a position where you are just wanting to accelerate your results and you just want to put your foot on the pedal and double down and really go hard on this, then get on to support and have a chat with us about Mavericks Club. Get on the phone and have a chat with one of our team about Mavericks Club. Christopher Shell says, the Blueprint is where it all started. Those guys are now in... Uh, Mavericks Club and having a great time and absolutely crushing it. There's the link in the comments to the Digital Agency Blueprint. Um, Go and check it out. And also uh, just email support at wpelevation.com and have a chat to us about uh, Mavericks Club. Cool, cool, cool. So, hey, man, so how many comments? This is just ridiculous. There's still 147 people watching. We've been live for 54 minutes. Uh, we've had 301 comments. It is just absolutely off the charts. Um Sheila Hurd says, you owe it to your clients to be profitable. Highly recommend the blueprint. Jennifer Paganessi says, WP Elevation's courses are amazing. Thank you. You'd think that we paid these people to be here, uh, but we haven't. Um, Kenson Clark says, I've been reaching out to current and older clients to see where they are. Simply offered to let them have a pop-up addressing the current climate, created a few new opportunities. Love it, Kenson Clark. Fantastic mindset. Uh, This is 
It's all about mindset, man. You just got to show up. You just got to face your fear and go, yeah, we're all freaking out. Let's do it together. Show up, offer support, offer help. Um, people just love feeling held. Yeah. People just love knowing that they are being held and being supported. Mm. And that they're not alone too. I think sharing our vulnerabilities and and just that we're all in this together, by being one of the first ones to do that, it really helps to connect people and go, oh, wow, you're experiencing that? I thought I was alone experiencing this all by myself. Now I'm a bit more empowered and I can move towards where I want to get to. I think um, it's a it's a very brave thing to do to put yourself out there. Absolutely. Jenny uh, Shell says, nut balls count seven. Well, make it eight. Nut balls, nut balls, nut balls. <laughs> uh, um, ben Tiffin says, Nancy, I'm going to answer that question in a second. Ben Tiffin says, Troy, you mentioned about going live. Where would you suggest to do that if you have little to no audience online? Example on Facebook. Ben, I would suggest to do it on Facebook. Facebook yep. usage is exploding at the moment and I'm surprised their service is still up. It's just ridiculous. Uh, I would suggest to do it on Facebook. doesn't matter if you don't have an audience, dude. Just offer value. Um, you know, go live on your personal profile to begin with. Uh, don't do it on your business page because you'll get no traction. Just go live on your personal profile and just be consistent and you'll gradually yeah. build an audience over time. That's it. Exactly. And I think it's it's more about you showing up consistently, even though you, the numbers may not be where you want them to be or whatever. It's about you doing that. I think that builds a great habit and it's just action taking. I remember doing a, a challenge. I think it was a 21 day challenge or a 30 day challenge with Ray Miladoni about going live every single day. And I mean, some of those videos were like filmed sideways and then I upload them and I'm like, oh my God, it's all backwards and I'm trying to write on a whiteboard. It was awful. But you learned so much from doing that and still get people thanking me, like clients who were watching those. I had no idea when I stopped because I was thinking, oh, these are no good. I'm no good at this. They were saying, hey, what happened to the videos, dude? They were super useful. I was sharing them with my friends. Yeah. It's like, what? Tell yeah. me. I need I like words of affirmation Correct. over here. That's <laughs> like, right. I need, tell me I'm amazing, please. That's right. And, <laughs> and I, I can tell you now, if you're feeling like you're in a bit of a funk, go live and get some gratitude from people and it makes you feel amazing. I, I will get off this live call and I will be high for the rest of the day because yeah. I know that I've contributed something to the community and I'm getting tons of gratitude here. I mean, this is this is the best this is the best live stream I think we've ever done. And we're at home. We're not using the fancy studio. We're just connecting with people. And it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's, uh, I'm absolutely loving it. A couple of questions here. Uh, Nancy Seeger says, if you're a current WP Elevation member, what's the difference with the agency package? Nancy, email support at wpelevation.com and we'll get you sorted out. Um, uh, Rich, the prices are in US dollars. Uh, again, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, wherever you are, mate, email support at wpelevation.com and we'll have a conversation with you. Um, James Fulton says, what's the difference between Mavericks Club and WP Elevation? James, uh, PM me, dude, and uh, we'll have a conversation. Mavericks Club is our mastermind for our high-performing agencies. So think about Mavericks Club if you are – uh, if you're just starting out and you, um, I, I think of it like this, WP Elevation is like a vending machine full of really amazing, healthy choices that are going to help you in your business. Mavericks Club is the concierge version. So Mavericks Club is like, um, we are like librarians and we hold your hand, take you to the vending machine and say, hey, you know, what, what are you hungry for? Do you want a salad? Do you want a wrap? Would you like some soda water? Great. Is that what you're feeling like? Awesome. If it's not in the vending machine, I'll make it fresh for you. If it is, I'll grab it for you and give it to you straight away. So it's like the concierge version. It's for our high performance um, agencies. Uh, so just jump on support at wpelevation.com and have a chat with us, or you can visit themaverick'sclub.com and watch the case study there and book in uh, a time to have a, a call with one of our team. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Lloyd Mabudo, the difference between the digital agency blueprint and WP Elevation. Again, yeah, just email. If you're if you're an existing customer, just email support at wpelevation.com and we'll have a conversation and let you know uh, the difference there. Jeff Martin says, number one, plus one for the blueprint. It changed my business and gave me room to breathe. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, oh, look at that. Jenny, Shell, we love you so much. This was so great, Troy, Dan and Simon Kelly. Thank you, seriously. We're so grateful for you and hearts. Thank you so much. It's, it's just awesome to be able to do this. And uh, I feel so fortunate that I, we have, I have a roof over my head. I have food on the table. I have a beautiful wife looking after our two and a half year old and we're about to have another baby. I've got the internet plugged in. I've got everything I need to be able to do this. I feel so fortunate and so lucky to be in this position to be able to 
you know, go live and, and help you guys and be a part of this community. Um, Jeanette Elton, check this out. WP Elevation is the best thing that's happened in my work life ever. Wow. Jeanette, thank you so much. Uh, that is um, just fantastic to hear. I, I just love hearing feedback like that. Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, here we go. Oh, apparently Meetup are allowing you to do meetups online. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, here we Nick go. Nick is feeling super pumped and motivated. That's awesome. You're a rock star, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Mar Marion says, live on personal profile, not business page. I heard that Facebook penalizes you for this. I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what my hack is, right? I knew that we were going live on our business page today, um, but I knew that if we just went live on our business page today that we wouldn't get much traction because you just don't if you go live on a business page. So I went – so two things. I went I, – first of all, I set up a scheduled live on our business page so that I have a URL I can promote in advance. Then we emailed our list twice – once yesterday and once at nine o'clock this morning saying, hey, uh, once at eight o'clock this morning saying, hey, we're about to go live. So once yesterday and once an hour before the live saying, hey, come check it out. And I went live yesterday on my personal profile and promoted today's live, which is on our business page. Um, I don't know anything about um, um, Facebook penalizing you for going live. I'm not, not sure. Um, here we go. And Carol Stanbor says, yeah, I've been using that humanness and acknowledging this crazy time when I'm following up with leads and emails. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, have you guys got any questions? What's the difference between WP and Mavericks? <laughs> Kat says, Hmm, everything. <laughs> Kat <laughs> has been through both and is now in Mavericks and is our community manager and onboarding specialist in Mavericks Club. And uh, it's uh, and just a really integral part of the team. Um, and it was great to chat with you on Voxer yesterday, Kat, and look forward to chatting with you more in you know on Zoom and on the phone over the coming months. Mavericks is the four... <laughs> Sam Manetti. Mavericks is the four-course meal and a happy ending. <laughs> oh, I love it. Nick Gulich says, this has been awesome, my dudes. Thank you, Nick. It's been great. Time with you guys is always time well spent. Thank you, Jonathan Holborn. Jonathan Holborn was the first elevator I met when um, my first ever trip to Los Angeles and I went out to West Hollywood and Jonathan showed me around and took me to Mixology 101, one of my favourite bars. And I'm looking forward to getting back there again in the future because we will come out the other side of this. Yeah. You remember the last time we were there, Troy? And yeah. you were just I was out sick. for like four days. I man. Oh, yeah, so got I, off the plane. I went and had drinks with the with Got the off the plane and like got, got a migraine for the first time ever in my life and just hit the deck, just was <laughs> just out. Sent you off to go and say hi to Jonathan. I was like, I was in bed for a couple of days. That was brutal. Um, yeah, excellent. Chijo says, once the social distancing is removed, I'm giving you both a bro hug. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Love it, love it, love Super it. Distance. Come here. Gather around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, there's so much love going on here. It's just great. Um, Mavericks is like running and WP Elevation is like learning to walk, says Mitch. Yeah, perfect. Nancy Seeger says, timely and feeling pumped even though I'm a bit under the weather. No worries. I'm at the tail end of the flu. Yeah, yeah. And love this. Thank you, Jeff Martin. Big shout out to all the parents struggling with homeschooling too. This has been so good. Thank you, Troy and Simon. Thank you, Jeff, for, for uh, tuning in. And thank you guys for being a part of it. This has just made it so worthwhile. We've been live for one hour and three minutes. Uh, we've had... It's still 129 people watching live now. I don't know how many people are uh, tuned in, but we'll get those stats later. Uh, 57 likes, 120 love hearts, 15 crying eyes uh, from laughter, 375 comments on this live. This is absolutely nutballs. There it is again. And would I, this is proof, gang, that you should just be connecting with your tribe because people are desperate for connection and we all want to know that we are being supported and that at least offer people some clarity because there's so much confusion at the moment. So hope this has been helpful. Um, if you want to reach out and talk to us about how we can help you more, get into the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Get on over to the Digital Agency Blueprint uh, course. That is on uh, – That's a, it's, a, it's a crazy deal. It's on sale for $1,497. It's normally over four grand retail. Plus there's a whole bunch of bonuses in there which are – almost going to guarantee you're going to get an immediate return on investment on that thing. Um, that sale finishes Sunday night Pacific time. So you've got a few days to get hold of that. And if you want to have a chat to us about Mavericks Club and how we can really help you thrive over the coming months, then just uh, email support at wpelevation.com or check out themaverickclub.com and uh, uh, watch the screen, watch the uh, case study there and book in for a call with one of our team. We'd love to have a chat with you.
Absolutely. Simon yeah. Kelly, dude, it's been epic. This has just yeah. been so much fun, man. Yeah, always a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Get we'll, on there. Like, let us know what you guys need. We're going to try to put some things together. As we're learning and new information comes in, we'll just be openly sharing and, and trying to bring everyone together and help you out as much as we can. So please do the same. There it is. You know, what I, I, I was... not stop you pressing Well, you know, thing. I was nervous. Yeah. I thought well, that's... On the surface, though, you look calm and ready. I thought that's what might happen when we went live today. I thought we might just get crickets, but we didn't. We got applause, which is excellent. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Wrong All one. All right, that's my cue to leave. It's been good. I think it's midnight and nothing good happens after midnight. Also, exactly, nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Have a great day wherever you are. Keep in touch and share this with your friends. Share this with anyone who you think uh, might be helpful for. Um, stay safe. Hug your family and don't touch anyone else. And uh, we'll see you uh, again soon. Thanks, Simon. Adios. Go elevate, everyone. We were not so much struggling, but we were just unsure about the direction that we needed to take. I, I tried a few other coaches and just found that, that the approach they were taking just wasn't for me. I really needed um, someone to help me solidify where the business needs to go, how to help me with all the systems, and, and just to give me some clarity on where I needed to be. If I needed someone to hold me by the hand, I needed someone to give me that level of support so I didn't feel alone, I wanted to be um, guided. My name's Simon Major, I'm the owner of Practice Edge. We're in Diamond Creek, about 40 k's north of Melbourne. Our ideal client is anyone in the healthcare field. Typically, we, we service the needs of chiropractors, physiotherapists, osteopaths, dentists, doctors, surgeons, those type of practitioners. I want it to be systematized, I want it to be more streamlined, I want it to be such that I don't have to be here. We're already looking at putting in a, a, an operations manager next year. I don't want to have to be here. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to holiday with my wife. I want to just start to enjoy life a little bit more knowing that the business is looking after itself, that we have systems in place, that everything will run smoothly, and that most importantly, people will get the results that they're paying for. WP Elevation, I was 80% sure it was bullshit, and uh, I was gonna get my money back in the 30-day refund policy but within two weeks we paid for the whole year because it was so valuable and then Mavericks has been just 10 times that. I decided to go and uh, see what uh, what's what's uh, what's included in the program and how it can grow my business and it did. So after joining WP and implementing some uh, some of the processes into my business my mind was like boom screw this freelancing stuff and let's work on my branding and positioning and find better clients. The biggest benefit of Mavericks is really just the, the network, I think, the support group. Um, there's so many people here that are doing things that are really similar to what I'm doing. There are so many people who are doing things that are completely different. Um, and it's just awesome to see, oh, that's what they're doing. Like, I want to do that. Or, oh, I see that what that person is doing. It's working really well for them. I don't really know that that would be fit for me, but I'm so glad that I know about that as an option and just kind of, um, yeah, really it's the, it's the minds that are here that are the biggest benefit. Blueprint no-brainer. If you are any, even if you're not even the WordPress field, you're a freelancer, Blueprint, no, no qualms about it. I, re, I have a WordPress meetup that I do and I'm always telling them, you need to do this. The mistakes that I made the first 15 years of my business, you won't have to go through that. You'll have this all ready for you. It's fantastic. Mavericks, if you're kind of at my level and you've, you've got a team um, and you just, like I said, you just want to get over that hump and you're not sure how and, and again, you're kind of feeling alone again, that's for sure the Mavericks group because it's not just Troy, it's not just him talking to you, but the, you're going to be surrounded by others that are in the same boat as you. With WP Elevation, I have a process I love and one that my clients feel too. One thing that's benefited me and has benefited many other people in the WP Elevation community is that once you join WP Elevation, the community engages with your journey, plus they're willing to help solve any problem with you as a web designer. So within the first year of being in the program, I made more on my business running it full time than I had at my day job and doing web design part time on the side. I made more in the first year. So. It's like kind of like no looking back. When I'm asked what the biggest benefit of joining Mavericks is, I have to say 
my business best friends. Like these are people that seriously care about me and my business and will go above and beyond to make sure that I'm okay and that we're growing. Um, from a very practical perspective, I've gone from being a complete mess, making things up on the fly, to having an entire business system. I really good at some things in my business but so many things I did not have in place. Didn't have a system for finances, I had no dashboards, I had no predictable products, I didn't really have any marketing machines, I relied on word of mouth. I was flying by the seat of my pants with my team and we didn't have any procedures in place and now I have all that and uh, it's pretty freaking liberating. I know basically how much I'm going to make every month through client monthly maintenance plans that I learned how to set up through the WP Elevation program. Uh, two, I have processes in place so my work week is incredibly scaled down and it's a much more pleasant experience. I'm able to, to do what I need to do in less time. And three, I know, have access to an amazing WordPress community through the WP Elevation program. The kinds of clients that I want to appear to appeal to have changed because I've got so much more confidence in the product that I produce and the way that I handle my customers. It's very much a lifestyle business that I'm going for. I want to be in a place where I choose the, my clients, right? Where I'm not, uh, you know, I never have the temptation to work with someone just because I need the money. Um, but when, we, when I enter into a relationship with a client, we're entering in that relationship because we both feel really good about each other and about the value that I can bring and, um, and the, how much they value what I do. Yeah, so I would definitely uh, recommend Mavericks to you know, anyone that's, you know, if you're you know, struggling, you, need, you don't have like, a clear sense of direction for your business, or if you're just really take, looking at taking it to the next level, just you know, for me, for example, uh, I'm coming from having a full-time job making the transition to running my own business. So yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, Mavericks to anyone that really wants to kind of elevate their business and take it to that next level. I've already had, you know, definite, definite dividends on my investment. I, I guess I've been a member for about two months now. And I spent the first part of my membership, the first three or four weeks, I spent just going through the forums, looking at um, all the, the previous webinars that you'd run and kind of breaking down the blueprint into the little steps and seeing how is this different from what I'm already doing. And there were a lot of differences, specifically with the way you position yourself, um, the kinds of solutions that you're offering clients rather than you know, selling piecemeal technical kind of specs. Um, and so I spent the first three or four weeks just trying to figure out exactly where this was and I decided that I was kind of suffering from analysis paralysis and not doing anything. So when I had a big opportunity land in my plate um, for somebody who I knew that I could definitely serve that value to, I just took it from the very first step. I needed some outside help. Um, working in isolation is sometimes um, you just know that you might not be doing things as well as you could be and uh, you're not quite sure where to get the help from and I'd looked at a lot of different things like I'd even I'd, I was I was very close to signing up to doing an MBA um, but for the expense of it and and the time commitment and I, I just didn't know how relatable it would be for, for for me and my business it was almost like I might do this and then go on and do something else um, and then, you know, Troy's course came up. That was, um, that just really was, you know, exactly what I needed and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, yeah. Oh my God, my mind has been blown away. I just spent four days with Troy and his team, but three days was specific to Digital Mavericks. We went out to dinner one night and I told Troy, this trumps anything that I have done and paid for that's been like twice as expensive. And he's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I have never participated in something where I've walked away with a tangible business plan, a strategy, templates. Like I didn't want to draw or write on anything because I want to use it again and again. But it just, it blew my mind. It far exceeded any expectations I had. And the caliber of people in this group, I was a little nervous because I'm not in it, but they just totally opened me with welcome arms. And it's really cool to see people focused keeping their business simple and totally growing recurring revenue.